Hi, this is a video about uh, chord suffix, suffix fonts in Finale. So you know that um, when we do a default document in, in Finale or default like setup wizard, there are certain preset font libraries that get loaded. So if I do engrave style, I get basically Times New Roman for text and Maestro for the music. And if I do handwritten style, I get Broadway copyist. Let's just do an engraved style here for a minute. So I'll say, um, <clears throat> now the, the I'm just doing one, just one uh, staff of music here. Um, so this default, if I go to document and do document options, um, we can see that here's all my text is defaulted to, I'm just picking different things. It's all Times New Roman <clears throat> and my suffixes are Times New Roman. Um, and my symbols. Okay, it's all that. It's all that. That's what you, is pre-selected. But if you, <clears throat> um, since we're focusing on chord symbols, just click on the chord symbol tool. If you double click and choose suffix, you'll see your whole library. And if that's not something that you like the look of, um, you may want to choose one of the other possible libraries, chord suffix libraries that are available to you in Finale, and also you can add new ones. You can, you can buy additional ones. So how do you do that? Well, uh, the first thing you're going to do is, is probably is delete this one or start with a document without libraries. Let's, let's learn how to do that. So your goal here is to build sort of a template for yourself that looks the way you want to, you want your chord symbols to use, look. So one way to do that is to start here and say new document without libraries and libraries are of course are like default the default appearance of different things and then simply uh, go here and say load library and since this is a blank slate whatever you load will be it won't be messed up mixed up with anything else so this it will finale will automatically go to this folder which has all these different libraries in it stuff and we're focusing on chord suffixes so I'm going to go there and um, <clears throat> say you want to experiment, and you say, well, let's see what would Arial look like. So you could grab that, say, okay, open that, and it's, it's just imported it. And if you want to see what it looks like, you double click, say select, and you can see that's the appearance of Arial. But just uh, importing that much doesn't give you the full library. So what you do is you, um, whenever you're importing a chord library, you import a section uh, additional sections so let's do another one load library and we will do as you can see there is some additional Arial stuff we can bring in we've got Arial expanded okay that's going to give you additional tensions and stack tensions and versions of chords suffixes you know just more stuff to choose from and once that's been loaded, we take a look, you'll see that there's more in here now. You see, now we get down to the bottom and we see some triangles in there now, and there's um, stack tensions, stuff like that. And uh, if, you, if that's not enough for you, you could just keep going. You can go back and load library again and load some of these other additional aerial um, libraries here. Let's see what else we've got. We've got um, large chord suffixes. So this is bigger versions of the suffixes. Uh, slash chords, shorthand. I'm not quite sure what shorthand is. Um, let's. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, import that and just see what. We'll take a look at it. Um, It looks like some, oh yeah, it's got stuff like, you know, the half diminished symbol. Uh, looks like it's got more, oh, it's got some minus symbols. So basically what I would recommend you do is just import everything to do with the font that you want to experiment with. And once you've got everything in that you would possibly use, then step two is to erase the stuff that you would not use, that you would never use. And just say, like, you would you never use small m or whatever. So anything with a small m, 
because you're using minus wherever, you can just select and then delete. And I'm not going to do it all now because it takes a while. But once you've done it, you might be down to, say, 30 suffixes or something like that. And once you're down to a smaller number like that, you can arrange them in a certain order. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, that this is currently in, in your favorite order right now. Then you can start memorizing numbers. And if you have a complicated chord symbol that you it would be hard to type in, like let's take a stack tension one, like something like this. Uh, let's do that one. Um, you can move it up higher order, you know, until you, unfortunately you have to do it step by step like this. But once you've done it, of course, don't forget at this point you will have erased a lot of things you're not going to use. So it won't take you so long. But eventually you'll get it to be a number that you is high, you know, maybe something between 1 and 20 or 1 and 25 or whatever, and you'll remember it. I'm just going to leave it at 100 now just to save time. So now you know, after a while, you have about 20 or 30 symbols that you use all the time, and you'll just start to memorize them. And especially for those ones that are long and complicated, um, if you remember the number, all you have to do is the following. So say you wanted to do a C7 flat 9 flat 13, and you knew the number, you just do a C hit shift colon and then that number, in this case it's 100, and I click and there it is, there's my symbol. So just to recap, what did we do? We imported a more elaborate chord library with things that we like, like stack tensions, or maybe there's other things in here that you like. Maybe you like using the triangle, or maybe you like using um, you know, the diminished symbol instead of a DIM, all this different stuff. You get all your good stuff in there that you like, erase all the stuff you don't like, and then or put it in order that makes sense to you. Okay, the final thing I want to share is how to change a font once you've got your chord library the way you want it, but maybe you decide you want to use a different font for a different project, or you're tired of that font and you want to change to something else. Um, the first thing you got to do is know what font is already there, and if, you're, if you can't quite remember, or maybe you get a document from somebody else and you want to change their font, you don't really know what the font is. Just go to Document, Document Options, and go to Fonts, and then you can see the chord symbol is Petaluma, the suffix is Petaluma. So now we know what it currently is. All right, now we can change it. The way we change it is by going to Document again, but this time we go to Data Check, Font Utilities, and we have to first say what it is that we is currently in the document. So we say search for, and then we choose that font. So again, it was Petaluma. Where is that? Right there. And we got to make sure to double click this uh, box so that it's deselected. Then you go to what you want to replace it with. So I'm going to select that. Now, when you're not all fonts will work, you know, well because some of them have symbols that don't correspond to letters and things like that. Um, but basically, since uh, chord symbols are for the most part, you know, it's basically treated like a text. What you do, let's just say we're doing Broadway copyist, you would go down here and choose um, Broadway copyist text. That's a good good place to start with any font if it has a text version. Uh, if it turns out you get the wrong one, you can just try another one until you get the right one. So you, I've chosen that. I, again, I double-click this to get the fixed size deselected because you want it to choose all sizes of text. Say OK. So now we have our old si thing we're getting rid of, Petaluma, and we're replacing it with our Broadway copyist. And then we just say Apply and OK. And now you can see it's now um, Broadway copyist um, appearance. And now my entire chord library has been changed to be Broadway copies. Now you'll notice that some of the spacing, uh, the library that was designed originally that was brought in here was um, designed, um, I think it was in Arial. So the, some of the spacing might not translate perfectly. Um, so you might have to deal with that if you're changing fonts a lot. But um, many of them are trouble free. Um, but anyway, that's the way you would do it. Uh, that's how you would change from one font to another once you've got your chord library established the way you want it.